from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back to KPIX 5 this morning. The time is 8 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Melissa Kane. I'm Phil Matero. Thanks, Netta. And new this morning, police are investigating a deadly officer-involved shooting during a hostage situation. It started late last night in San Francisco's Knob Hill neighborhood. Police say the suspect was holding his wife and two children inside an apartment, and after several hours of negotiations, there was gunfire, and police moved in. And the suspect was shot, taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The wife and children are okay. And flames tore through an old barn off Quimby Road in San Jose last night. The flames also sparked a brush fire that burned two acres. No injuries have been reported and no word yet on what caused the blaze. That's under investigation. In national news, emergency crews in Puerto Rico are racing to evacuate tens of thousands of people who live downstream of a failing dam. The reservoir is completely swollen from Hurricane Maria's heavy rain. Right now, an estimated 15,000 people across the island are living in shelters. Others are trapped in their ruined homes, using flashlights and candles as their only source of light. And desperation continues to grow as food and water supplies run low. Communications are also crippled. 85% of Puerto Rico's landlines and internet cables are disabled, and this is the only working cell phone tower left standing on the island. Meanwhile, Bay Area crews are still returning from Hurricane Irma work in Florida. PG&E teams were there ahead of the storm, and as soon as it passed, they were on scene restoring power. Yesterday, they came home after about two weeks away. They say when they were in Florida, it took a few days to adjust to the swamp and humidity conditions. It was kind of like getting hit in the face, just with like a wet blanket. The second you walk outside, it's just, you're just sweating. It's just, you know, you're just drinking water constantly just to stay hydrated. Had to use a little bit of different uh, procedures than we're used to for digging and setting poles and, and getting wire back up. The utility workers said some locals in Florida were so appreciative that they offered them water and food. And the White House may soon replace its travel ban with new rules that are specific to individual countries. Now, President Trump's 90-day travel ban on six majority Muslim countries expires today. And the Department of Homeland Security wants the president to impose new travel restrictions that would vary from country to country. They could include bans on travel to the U.S. or restrictions on visas, but so far no countries or rules have been laid out. Several European countries are now talking about skipping the Winter Olympics in South Korea because of the ongoing tensions with the North. The Games take place in February, about 50 miles south of the demilitarized zone. Now Germany and Austria say that they may stay away if that's in the nuclear crisis with North Korea continues to escalate. The French were the first to express concerns, saying that if this gets worse and we do not have security assurances, that, that our French team will stay here. We will not put our team in danger. Meanwhile, Iran tested a new ballistic missile that the country says is capable of carrying multiple warheads. It was launched from an unknown location yesterday, just a few hours after it was unveiled during a military parade in Tehran. Iran media claims that the missile can fly more than 1,200 miles. Right-wing firebrand Milo Yiannopoulos is promising a free speech showdown today at the UC Berkeley campus, no matter what, even as his long-planned free speech week is canceled. I have never seen a concerted, coordinated effort like this to disrupt and destroy the aspirations and plans of a university's own student body. Now, the sponsoring student group, Berkeley Patriot, decided to pull out of the event, and the attorney for the group says that they felt the university gave them no other choice but to cancel Free Speech Week. But a university spokesman claims that's nonsense. At first, it was threats uh, dealing with administrative discipline. In other words, that they would uh, somehow affect their ability to get their uh, degrees. We get into extraordinary lanes to support free speech. We're in the process of spending a million dollars to support free speech. Any claims to the contrary are just simply ridiculous. Now, despite Berkeley Patriots' decision to cancel the event, Yiannopoulos promises to be on campus today with other conservative speakers. He's asking his supporters to march with them at 12 o'clock. Okay, right. on another free speech front, the Oakland A's catcher becomes the first player in Major League Baseball to kneel during the national anthem. Last night, Bruce Maxwell took a knee, placed his cap over his heart, and faced the flag. A teammate put a hand on Maxwell's shoulder in solidarity. 
The A's organization said in a statement that the Oakland A's pride themselves on being inclusive. We support all of our players' constitutional rights and freedom of expression. The move was in response to President Trump, who had some tough words recently for some NFL and NBA stars who have refused to stand for the national anthem. Steph Curry recently said he won't go to the White House for the customary visit by the championship team as well. By acting or and not going, hopefully that will... Um, inspire some change when it comes to what we tolerate in this country and what is accepted. Curry's comment prompted a tweet from President Trump saying he was withdrawing the White House invitation to the Warriors. But the team, however, said it will still visit the Capitol, just not the White House. KPIX 5's Burn Glenn is in Washington, D.C., ahead of today's Raiders and Redskins game, so he asked people for their take on the whole thing. Every other professional sports team has ever won a championship never had that happen to him since they started doing this. And I think it was more of a, a sign of him basically doing what he does like on Twitter, you know, and he'll attack back because you said something or done something he didn't necessarily agree with. It's a little silly to think that just because these people are famous that somehow they don't have some sort of ability or right to speak out. They may have an amplified platform, but they still are just like the rest of us. And more reaction here at home. Assembly member David Chu of San Francisco tweeted out Steph Curry for president in 2020. Anyone? I'm sure those t-shirts are being printed right now. The president is also in a war of words with the NFL after criticizing football players for kneeling during the national anthem. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a off the field right now, out, he's fired. Well, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell issued a statement saying, quote, divisive comments like these demonstrate an unfortunate lack of respect for the NFL and our great game and all of our players. Meanwhile, 49ers CEO Jed York says in a statement, the callous and defensive comments made by the president are contradictory to what this great country stands for. Our players have exercised their rights as United States citizens. And according to several people on Twitter, at least hundreds of players in the NFL are expected to protest Trump by kneeling during the national anthem at today's games.